The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 10th, the, mag the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show underway. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. You've got the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ trading to the upside, 62, 11, and 58 points. Biggest percentage is the NASDAQ, but uh, almost four-tenths percent to the upside. To the downside, the Russell, uh, three-tenths, half percent for the semis, 21 points, about two-tenths for the trannies. They're down 26. Gold is flat. Silver is flat. Light speed crude is flat. Natural gas is down 18 cents. That is not flat. And the 30-year Treasury up two ticks, printed out at 122.15. The leader to the upside, it's the one that gets that squeaky wheel. That's WD-40 of 41 buckaroonies, a 17-point move. Intuitive Surgical up $17 and change, 5%. And Video 14 bucks, 2.5%. Service now 12 bucks, 1 and 7 tenths percent. And Facebook is up 11 bucks. That's a 3% move there. To the downside, it's Icon PLC, 5%. Uh, 14 bucks and change. Charles River Laboratories off nine, a little over four percent. Broadcom down nine, that's uh, nearly one percent. Uh, you've got uh, Netflix off 770, one and six tenths percent. So we've got some movers and we've got a few shakers. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. I think what you want to look at is what are these markets doing, Steve O? So let's start here. Where is here? Here's the daily equity future contracts. Take a look at the daily equity future contracts. Here's what we know at this stage right now. Uh, the ES Mini is trading above the bottom of its daily profile as it's generated by my e-signal system. These are the black background charts. And the white background chart, as an example, and I'd write this down in your pad of paper, that level's at 47.16 would be support. Here we're seeing a 47.99. Well, that's the harder one. And a price close above 47.99 today. That suggests a run up towards its oscillator and change line, not shown on this chart, 48.27. Well, it turns out 48.27 is the center of its bearish structure daily profile. So I would say that if the ES Mini closes above 47.99 today, odds favor move to 48.27. I think that uh, that additionally, the, uh, that, that, that likelihood increases don't worry you knew i'd find the words it just took a little while there you knew i would find the words the likelihood of the es mini making its move to 4827 would be increased if we get the nq to close above the top of its daily profile no i don't have any different signals here profile wise whether it's the e signal or the ninja trader system that i'm using out there and so that's at 16833 we'll call it we're trading at 16885 now the next upside resistance price target so this does not mean that we automatically go to the highs would be the oscillator and change line for the NQ. On a daily basis, that's printing right now at 16,961. I would note that knowing that on a price move, that's going to go up by, you know, a little bit or uh, moves down. But you can use that as your 
target area. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, we just have a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside its profile. That's after forming a Rogemintum indicator top. It formed that top right here when it generated that bearish reversal candle on January the 3rd out there, but still just a sideways consolidation. You can see on its move up, there's never been a break of the profile low, so there's no change in trend here. The Dow is in a consolidating bull market. That's in the U.S. If we go overseas, we're at new all-time highs today. And we're going to go take a look at that because that's important for you and I. At least I believe that's important for you and I to understand. It's not just how the Dow trades in the U.S. You and I, we don't do that during the show. Let's let everybody else just focus on that. You and I want to understand how these instruments are trading in other major currencies. Enough about the Dow. We'll come back to it. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, it has formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, a sell the D point top. It formed it when it generated these this four bars here. That was the four bars between the days of December. December 26 to December 29th. That was what's referred to as a four bar evening star candle formation. Now, the Russell 2000, just like the NQ, just like the ES Mini, has had, has had a profile change in trend signals to the downside out there. And right now, we just simply have price consolidating with inside this profile. The current one that is trading in has support at 1954, resistance at 2002. So, what else can we glean from these charts out here? I, with Stevie, would have to say, not much. Okay, so not much. Let's move on. Let's move on and take a look at the S and P 500. I mentioned that. No, I mentioned the Dow. Let's go do the Dow first. Let's take a look at the Dow price and other currencies. Now, here you can see the other currencies. I've got them labeled. We're taking a look at the dollar plus eight other currencies. Those currencies being the five that make up the U.S. dollar. How is uh, the Dow trading in terms of euros? Well, its all-time high was formed back on January 2nd. Uh, that January 2nd high was 34,467. Today's high has been 34,431, so about $30 away from making that another new all-time high. The Dow's new all-time high came on January 2nd of 2024 as well. Well, the yen... It's made a new all-time high today. In fact, I have to move it up a little bit uh, further than where it's at. But that's making it today. I ask you this question. If you're over in Japan and you're trading the Dow, are you really a seller here? You're really not a seller, are you? Not unless we've got some kind of major topping signal we can see on an intraday basis that we're starting to see some type of change in trend. The answer would be no. The folks in Japan are loving it. Their currency is weakening. That's why the U.S. dollar index has picked up a little bit of strength today. We can also take a look at that out there. Uh, but they're all bulls. They are breakout bulls. New all-time high today. That's after the new all-time high that formed most recently, which was about three or four days ago. Great British pound, that new all-time high came in on January 2nd, just like it did with the euro and the uh, U.S. dollar index out there. Uh, we're at a new all-time high today in terms of Aussie dollars. That is the Dow that we're taking a look at. This is not how um, markets end out there. In fact, what this is telling us is that the S&P, or the Dow, we're looking at the Dow right now, has got to go make a new all-time high. If it's doing it in these other currencies, it's going to do it inside the U.S. currency as well. Doesn't mean it does it today or tomorrow. Not that it can't out there, but this is what offers us promise. And this is also so important to understand because I'm gonna, we're going to take a look at some sell signals out here. But why hasn't the Dow been able to bust through that daily profile? This is one of the reasons. You want to know who the buy the dipsters are? They're over in Japan. They're over in Australia. I think, quite frankly, they're over in Europe as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. back up folks so we're taking a look at bigger picture here we're not looking at a 15 minute or 10 minute chart or what have you and trying to give you those gyrations really trying to give you a bigger global view of what's going on inside the markets here uh, it may be helpful to you might answer some questions in your mind here, this is the dow chart now this dow this is a set of dow charts i've got daily weekly and monthly it turns out the daily's on the right the monthly's on the left and then the center is the weekly those diagonal or the horizontal lines that you see out there those are referred to as horizontal trading ranges uh to my knowledge it was popularized by bud rolfs out there he used to do all this stuff manually I'm not really great at uh, doing manual things that so can be done electronically, and that's why I developed this program. Uh, it's slightly different than his. He referred to as his primary trading ranges. I just simply call these horizontal trading ranges, not to uh, confuse the matter. But what you're seeing is you're also seeing some numbers on, on each of those uh, blocks, if you will, where those horizontal lines are. That's telling you how many closes or opens there were at that price level. That's what you're doing to establish your horizontal trading range boundary lines out there. Once you have those established, then you can just then you know what the price distance is to that to the upper line, the lower line, and so forth. The point is, now that I gave you that whole gyration that you didn't need that, uh, I'm sure that was just confusing information out here. But if I take a look at the monthly time frame chart, once you get past one horizontal trading range, you typically make a B line for the next horizontal trading range. In the case of the Dow, it's got an A to B equals CD. The upside gives you a one to one price projection. This is the small A to B equals CD pattern. That one to one price projection takes you up to 39,290. At 39,763, and we don't use these numbers right to the T out here. That's that's the next horizontal trading range on a monthly basis. We can see here, uh, if I just simply expand out the chart just a tad, you'll see I also had a descending price channel that was taken out last month. It was taken out with conviction, a wide ranging bar out there. So the bigger picture, bigger picture here in the Dow is it wants to make the move to that 40,000 level. 
How about that? Remember years ago, I remember making that uh, call and suggest. I said 40 and then 60 out there, and it wasn't just a guess. We took a look at patterns uh, that could be in play out there, and here we are. Lo and behold, just a few thousand points away from getting to that 40. Well, this chart suggests that that's what it wants to do. That's why we took a look at how the Dow was trading in major currencies out here. We look at the weekly time frame. It, too, is above its horizontal trading range boundary line at 36.322. There were eight either opens or closes at that touch point out there. That suggests price wants to go to its next level, its next level, 38.310. So we got 38.310, 39.290, and 39.763 sold is what I say. No, it can't be sold because we got the daily time frame, Stevo. And if you look at the daily time frame, you'll see that it too is above its horizontal trading range boundary at 37.310. This is suggesting it wants to make a move to 38.024. So we take a look at the Dow price this way with these charts. It says that it wants to move higher out there. Now, I would say this is likely to come to fruition. That is, if in fact you start to see that if you see the Dow close above the top of its daily profile, because that will negate its sell signal. That was also a four river evening, uh, a four river, that was a four river, no, it was a bearish engulfing candle. So if price is able to close above this high, that's the high from January 2nd, 38113, then those charts that we just took a look at really come into play out there. So let's do this. I could uh, spend, I could spend all day. I don't have all day, just about another 40 minutes. Like, we can do the same thing. How's the S&P doing? The S&P, U.S.-centric, okay? U.S.-centric. It made a new all-time high today in terms of yen. New all-time high today in terms of Australian dollars. A new all-time high today in terms of euros. This is not how bull markets end, ever. At least in my ability to go back and take a look at stock charts and see how things trade and take a look at them and other currencies out there. It's just not the way that tops form. If you were to take a look at those horizontal trading ranges for the S&P 500, here's what you would see here. The daily time frame. First price is above a rising price channel that I've got in here. But more importantly, the 47.55 level, that's a horizontal trading range. 15 opens or closes at that level. That's a pretty key area out there. This is suggesting price moving up to 49.20. And the weekly chart, you can see I've also got that same descending price channel that price closed above. And price is beginning to trade above 47.50. That's its horizontal trading range. Shoot, this is saying 5,300 is where it wants to target. And on a monthly basis, it's even more clear with regard to the ascending price channel. Uh, you can see a, large, a couple of A to B equals CD patterns. That's not the important thing. The important thing is this is suggesting a move up to 50.10. So these charts here, we take a look at how the S&P 500 is even trading in other major currencies. That is not how bull markets end. That doesn't mean we can't pull back. That doesn't mean the uh, uh, seasonal chart that you and I have been looking at that suggests that we had lower. But we also can't just be myopic and only take a look at just like Curly might want to do one thing. We're not going to do that during this show. I'm not going to confuse you, but I, or I'm going to try not to confuse you. But I am going to provide you with the information that helps answer the question, well, for example, why the market's headed higher. I guarantee if you're sitting over in Tokyo right now and you're up at 1130, 1230 in the evening, I'd have to say, well, what are you doing up? Well, maybe you're trading the U.S. markets out there and you're trading them in what basically is your local currency. And those folks, they are breakout bulls. That goes for folks in Europe this morning as well. Euro, uh, S&P at Euro, new all-time highs. All right, let's go take a look at some of the requests that have come out here. Otherwise, I'm going to put everybody to sleep, and I don't want to put anybody to sleep out there. The first question came in. This is uh, David in Panama City. He's been trying to manage his trade, SMCO, uh, SMCI, Super Microcomputer. So we've looked at it a few times out here. That's okay with me. You guys can write back, guys and gals. You can write back every single day. I'm here for an hour. I'm here to service you. So what is it you want to look at? You, know, you have given me, I've got four or five different requests out there. So in this case here, David's question specifically is, can it take out this high? This high being 357, even Steven out there. Well, it most certainly has the volume to be able to do that. So I've got the swing point drawn. You're looking at the upper left-hand side. You'll see that that swing point high that he's referring to dates back to the trading session of August the 7th. There was 3.3 million shares of traded hands that day. We have already done that, I, but the uh, stock market has already done 2.8 million shares. So 2.8 million, we've only been trading for two hours out here. So price is pushing that swing point with volume. You know, David, you have to ask yourself that question. If it's pushing in with swing, if it's pushing into that swing point with volume, why hasn't it taken it out? 
Well, I can answer that question for you. I just thought I'd pose the question. Well, take a look at that weekly chart. You see, the daily's got a swing point, and so too does the weekly chart at that 357. Turns out the volume at that stage there, 30 million shares, 31 million shares, really. What have we done so far this week? 13 million shares. So we've got basically a full trading week. Everybody is back in the saddle out there. So maybe, you know, we're not halfway through the day. Maybe we get to 50s. Maybe it's, you know, is it pushing with volume? Maybe it's pushing with volume. You know, we've got to really see on Friday out there. That's big numbers. Not that 13.8 isn't bad or anything along those lines out there. Um, but that could be one of the reasons why. And on a monthly basis, way too early for us to get in there. So I just wanted to take a look at this on the black background charts before I flip over to those white background charts just to see what other signals are out there. And the other signal that is out there or signals that are out there, you are in wave number seven. We talked about that, I believe, yesterday. Wave number seven, that's letter G, very small portion of the Chapman wave. Uh, that can be a, a top. It just needs to have a lower high. There's also an A to B equal CD pattern. If you get a bearish reversal candle today, David, if we did get that, I'm not saying that we will. I don't know if we will or not. But if we did, that's a sell the D point pattern. And that's where you've got the weekly chart, which got that huge Rosemontum indicator signal. So you're up at a stiff area of resistance. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the inventor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. Let's finish taking a look at uh, Super Micro Computer out here for David in Panama City. Want to add just a couple of things uh, to it. Uh, that first thing that we want to add to it is the uh, seasonal charts. Here's the 16-year 16, 16 seasonal chart for Super Micro. And we're in the favorable seasonal time period. In fact, if we take a look at historically, January is the second most favorable month. Uh, maybe it's the third. Looks like the first is May, the second is November, and then a uh, close uh, third is uh, January out there. So you are in that favorable seasonal time period. That would be a reason or consideration to continue to hold on to that trade. You'd also want to see something bearish. What could be bearish out here? Well, the first bearish signal, so to speak, would be seeing some type of change in trend short-term basis here on the 30-minute time frame I've got a wave number seven pattern I've certainly got a sell the D point pattern as well out here um, and uh, well I don't actually I can't say that but here's what I can say and this is really what I should have said just to begin with come on Steve O's get it together 335.97 so that's your first breakout level on a 30 minute time frame you start cracking these out here well then that could signal that you've got some type of change in trend otherwise that's just the buy the dip level at the 335.97 level out there what else can I provide I don't really think much else other than that so you don't have any real sell signals you're pushing with volume I don't know why it can't take it out maybe it doesn't really have that weekly volume I don't know the answer to that, but just watch some support levels on the intraday basis because, you know, um, or take off. You know, I think I don't recall. Maybe it's an option position that you have. You know, you've come up towards that price target level, made that 100 percent move or move. You're not going to find too many people here at TFNN that uh, suggest to not take that uh, not take those profits out there at least i believe that's what you'd hear all right let's go to our next request out there gee steve oh thank you for finally turning the page right no let's go take a look at it it's rklb this is for jimmy d in the tiger's den i think this is rocket labs let me make sure i'm on the right screen yes i'm on the right screen rklb and i believe that jimmy would like to add to his position here so jimmy uh, it's trading with inside its daily profile. So support would be the level that you'd consider adding. Support is at 524. Today's low out here was uh, close to that. It didn't get all the way down there. It got down to a 527 level, three pennies. So I'd say that you're in the range here of where you could add because price is still below that green oscillator and change line, which is printing at 544. Maybe you're going to get another option to buy towards those lows, but that would be the area or the range on a daily time frame. Now, you can see the Rhodes Mintum indicator top that was confirmed with this bear sash candle back on December 29th. The other possibility is that this could set up an A to B equals CD pattern. So if price were to move into the swing point from January 3rd, do with more than 6.5 million shares, close below 505, that would give you an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. I'm not saying that's what it's going to do. I'm saying at least visually, that's a pattern that it could do. Pay attention to that. But right now, you do have a top. Price pulled back to support, even though it closed below for one session. You and I, we love one-hit wonders. We just don't trade one-hit wonders out there. And, in fact, that reason why is because on the very next day, price got back above those profiles. So still in a consolidating tone inside of Rocket Lab. So weekly chart, although it's just been really trading sideways out here, there's nothing bearish about it. The monthly chart is just trading with inside its profile that has resistance up at 633 out there. That's what I see when I take a look at Rocket Labs. It hasn't traded long enough for me to really pick up any kind of seasonal date out here just since 2021. So no reason for me to search that chart out there. Where else is it that you could add? Let's just take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart for Rocket Labs. See if there's any kind of patterns out here. You know, last time it formed a bottom it was a TD nine count pattern. Uh, then it formed a top that was a TD nine count that was eventually taken out. You do have wave number seven that's uh, created this little bit of a sell off. I don't know why it stopped where it has at this stage. In other words, what I mean by that is I don't have any pattern reason or support level specifically. I see prior swing points, uh, but that's it. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just I'm not going to spend time doing that for the uh, show. So I don't uh, – I'd have to say right now, uh, Jimmy, that uh, answer to your question is right around the 524, the level that it traded towards this morning. So I hope that helps you out. 
best of luck with that trade. Of course, if it breaks through that profile level and that swing point, well, then it would be generating a different message than the one right now on January 10th. Dan would like to take a look at ticker symbol LAES. LAES, and his question is, can this get to five buckaroonies? Well, right now, it's trading above the top of its daily profile. It's really trading at 218. I still have this little bit of a delay, one piece of paperwork to resolve today, and I should be up and running with no problems come tomorrow. But you're trading above 203, and a close above 203 today and tomorrow adds the idea of a further move higher. Why? Because that will have taken out the top of its profile. That was a big, wide profile out there. Where's the next profile level, Dan? You're going to love to hear this. Well, it'll be up at $11.21. Now, I'm not saying that's where it's headed to, but you do have a daily A to B equals CD pattern, and you've got volume inside this. The question is, will it have enough volume to take out that swing point, which had 50 million shares? You're at 30 million right now. It should, but you won't know till day's end. If you did get a uh, volume push and you did manage to close above the B point, that December 28th high, well, then that would generate an A to B equals CD pattern. And lo and behold, it's hit the one-to-one -one level as we speak. Now, price along the left-hand side of that A to B equals CD line, so short of a bearish reversal candle, 257 would be next up. And above 257, we're looking at 296 out there. What else can I provide to you? There's really not much. The only thing uh, that I can provide to you additionally on this, so I didn't really show you the A to B equals CD pattern. Let me switch over to the other charts out there. I'll show you that. But first here, before I do that, Dan, you can see that on a weekly base, there is a TD9 count pattern that formed. So that's up at six bucks. So oh, what was that? Five, five bucks. There's your five bucks. Your question was, oh, the only, Dan, that was a trick question, wasn't it? He, he, did you guys see what he, he threw in that trick question? Just seeing if I would get back to that TD9 count that he knew was there. That's how I must have come up with that $5. At least that's what Stevie's going with this morning. But back to the A to B equals CD pattern here with regard to uh, CLSQ out here. Let's go take a look at that. You'll see that in the daily time frame. I've drawn in the A to B equals CD. You can see the big volume. We're $29 million today. So getting above that uh, says we do a A to B equals CD pattern. But you can see we're on that left side of that C to D leg. That's the strong side that says you do more than a one-to-one. -one. And by the way, when you're coming into the D point, Whatever that is, it could be the one to one, 1.27, 1.1618 out there. When you're coming in with a wide ranging bar that has volume, as we do today, that adds the idea of further highs out there. So, Dan, nice going there, uh, trying to put in that little trick question can it get to five? Well, that's what the weekly chart is telling us. It can absolutely get to five. Phil would like to trade Crocs. C R O X is the ticker symbol out there. We take a look at Crocs. He says it's having trouble at the 200 day exponential moving average i believe you now i assume that you're referring to that as resistance here's what i can share with you with regard to the crocs daily chart and that is that price closed above the top of its daily profile the top of the daily profile was at 97.19 that was a bearish structured profile that's a bullish message in fact that message is suggesting to you and i feel that price should make its way towards its td9 count breakdown resistance level 107.60 if we look at the weekly time frame chart the weekly time frame chart is trading with inside its profile levels, but above its oscillator and change line, that says a further move higher would also be likely. 110.90 is going to be your significant resistance level, the top of its profile. But before it can get there, price would have to deal with the monthly oscillator and change line. That's been a resistance point. That's currently printed at 108.76. Crocs, trouble at the 200-day EMA? I believe you. But the daily chart says I want higher price. The weekly can support that. And the monthly, yeah, the same thing. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, 
educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So, oh, a couple of questions. Let's get to them. We've got one here inside the Tiger's Den from GPH. Says that the hourly chart for uh, gold formed a uh, TD9 count uh, bottom pattern. So, we've got some different data out there. Here is my hourly chart for gold. So, what you should be able to do is you should be able to, if you're, uh, it should be on your screen. If, uh, oh, wait, I got to change screens here. Give me a minute. Caught myself. Sorry about that. Momentarily, you should be able to capture this screen that we're taking a look at. All right, so uh, this is for um, GPH inside the uh, Tiger's Den, who was bringing this to our attention of a possible TD9 count. You can see I don't have that at all. Right now, we may be, we're in the formation of potentially bar number four. That's on the 60 minute time frame. So, to the extent that you're using the 60 minute time frame to uh, trade, um, you and I have got different signals there for sure. Uh, but let's go ahead and finish our analysis of uh, Goldilocks, see if there's anything else that we see out here. So we do see we take a look at the daily time frame. That's really where I'm going to start here. You can see that price formed a nice TD9 count at the high. It did on the bar following bar number nine. And price has found support. It's continued to find support at 2029.20. And 2029.20 is the uh, TD9 count breakout level. If price were to close below that, that suggests we head lower. The next lower price target would be up at 1979.30. That would be the next breakout area, the next TD9 count breakout level. The 30-minute chart did form a TD9 count bottom, so let's take a look at that. That was formed out here that completed right at 1030. Now, what typically takes place when you get a, a TD9, any kind of bottom pattern is price will make its move to its oscillator and change line. It's been trying to do that, but it hasn't been able to. That's currently printed at 2023 out there. Now, if price were to close below 20, 30, 40 on a 30-minute basis, Odds favor we had lower. Still that 29, 20, 29, 40, though, that daily breakout level is what really we need to see a uh, crack through a closed blow to truly suggest that we had the lower price. On a five hour time frame chart, I don't have a signal out here, just a consolidation with inside his profile. Roads momentum indicator bottom on the four hour chart with price consolidated with inside his profile. Both support has held 2027 and resistance at 2046 has held. Same thing on the 120 minute chart, although it's 
profile levels are 2028 to 2041 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, gold, Goldilocks out there. I hope that that helps you out. So just take a snapshot of the screen out there, and then you can try to take a look at your TD9s, and certainly write back to me if you've got some question out there. So thanks so much for the request. Let's get to some other requests that have come in. The next one is from uh, G-Man inside the Tiger's Den, and G-Man wants to go take a look at Mosaic, M-O-S, the ticker symbol. So momentarily, as soon as this chart here populates, I'll get back there. Let's see, where does Stevie have Mosaic? Is it here? It is not. That was Crocs, which we finished up. Let's go take a look at Mosaic. It should be on this set of charts here. Now, looking, G-Man is looking for an entry point. So what do we know about this? We can see an A to B equals CD pattern. I'll just draw on the A to B point. We'll just simply move that over uh, to the... Uh, uh, to the C area. I didn't do it exactly. You guys are getting the point out here. So you can see we've done more than a one-to-one -one level. So for your entry point, the first thing you'd be looking for would be a bullish reversal candle. If you get that, that could generate a Gart or would generate a Gartley buy pattern or a buy the D point. So you're looking for an entry point Point, that would be the first one that I would be looking at. Why is that the first one? Well, because right now we're in bar number five of a TD9 count. I don't know if we will get to bar number nine or not, so I don't have that pattern out there. We're trading below profile, so I can't give you a support area on the daily time frame. There's no TD9 count breakout level, so I would be watching for an A. I would be watching for a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame. The weekly chart says mosaic. If it does close the week below uh, 34.0, oh, well. I would say if it closed below 34.02, odds favor run down to the 32.20 level. Uh, if I take a look at the monthly time frame chart for Mosaic, let's actually populate it, see if there's any kind of signals out here. There's nothing here to assist us. So with regard to Mosaic, G-Man, you're looking for an entry. The pattern is the A to B equals CD pattern as we speak right now. That's one I'd be looking for. I'd watch for a bullish reversal candle, and then you can fire away. Hope that helps you out. Joe wants to take a look at Novavax. N-V-A-X is a ticker symbol, and he's looking for a bottom. Well, you take a look, and he said, hey, there's a short interest. I, th I don't recall what it was. 20, 30, 40, 50% out there. Well, the reason that it's they're short is because this thing has gone from what? This is this, you know, I, I'll keep my personal comments aside. But this here went from, and that's with regard to the vaccines. This went from, which I wasn't allowed to talk about, this went from 331 buckaroonies out here. And now today, what do we trade at? 479. 479, boy. So with regard to a bottom, the pattern that is in play here, Joe, right now that I see is a Rogemintum indicator bottom. Now, there's one that confirmed out here on January 2nd, and that low has not been taken out. It's been tested. The low on that is down at 477. 477 is your key support level. Uh, that was tested yesterday. It looks like with, a, with 460... Got down to 463, still close at 510. So that Rosemont indicator bottom is still in place out there. So if you're looking for a bottom, which you are, you've already got that bottom confirmation. Now let's take a look at volume out here. Yesterday's volume as it was pushing lower was 15 million shares against that prior swing point that had 14 million shares. So that was telling us that it was going to be back down there again, which it has done this morning. Now the volume today out here is at 2.3 million shares. So you've got much lighter volume because that's 7.1. Well, not much lighter volume. Two times three. And it's going to be similar type volume. So I don't, even though you've got the bottom pattern, that's the important thing. You do have that bottom pattern. Now the question is, what does price need to do in order to tell you you've got a really solid bottom? Hmm. So let's take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here. And the 30-minute time frame chart, I think this is a good one for you to watch, Joe, because it formed a nice TD9 count top. It did it at 3.30. That was on uh, the 8th a couple of days ago. And then when it bottomed, was a TD9 count bottom out here. And that was at the uh, uh, that was yesterday. That was down at that low at 4.63. If that low gets taken out, so whichever side of this fails probably gives you the direction that price is going to continue to head in. So if you see a close below 4.63, we're likely headed lower. If you see a close above 519, we're likely headed higher out there. Can I provide you with any better information? I wish I could, but I can't. And the weekly chart, there's just on the weekly chart. Let me see if we try to squeeze this together a little bit, maybe get a better picture. Uh, I can't get, oh, it's because of that one line. Let me do this here. Give me a second, because I can't get a good read of what the weekly chart is doing. But if you give me a second here, 
we're going to go ahead and change that so that that doesn't get in my way. I'm going to certainly try to change that, so let's just change that to a one. Just give me one line, one ping, Vasily. That didn't help either. Son of a gun. Okay, this is helping just a little bit. So, on a weekly basis, you've got a negated TD9 count bottom. You've got a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal and no bullish reversal candle. So, maybe that's what you really do, Joe, is you wait for a weekly bullish reversal candle to then confirm that bottom, and then you go ahead and uh, fire away. So, you've got the daily. It's just not getting a lot of traction to the upside. And maybe it's really the weekly that you need to confirm that pattern. Let's go take a look at SQM. This is for Brent in Martinez, California. In SQM, Brent is wondering, where are the other downside levels worth watching out here? We're going to answer that question when we come back from this breakout here. Uh, it looks like the bottom of its weekly profile or the center of its weekly profile is an area to watch. That's at 50.79. Let's answer that question when we get back from this break. We'll also take a look at URNM and TGB. Steve Roach with TFNM. We'll right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Welcome back. Go be quick here. We got a number of requests to get through. So, Brent, first on a weekly time frame, price is testing a level of support. That's its oscillator and change line, 51.14. Below that would be 50.79. That's the center of its uh, profile level. And the bottom of that weekly profile, 46.84. As I mentioned on the daily time frame, there are no other levels other than the swing point, which it may be targeting. That's a swing point. And I'm sure you've been identified this, the November 13th swing point. 
The high there is 50.99. Volume 6.9 million shares are out there. Maybe this goes on to form a TD9 count bottom on the uh, daily time frame to give you that uh, bottoming uh, pattern out there. No A to B equals CD or anything along those lines. So I provided you with the information you were asking for, the levels worth watching out there. On the monthly time frame chart, it's 48.52. That would be your level of support. The next request was a take look at URNM. The question is, is there a price target? Well, you're forming wave number seven today. You've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. Uh, price is really up at its price target, which is the top of its monthly profile. Now, monthly profile number is at 52 even Steven. The actual high that we've seen so far, I believe the high today has gotten us up towards that. It was 5208. So you're up towards resistance on the monthly. You're not a, you're you're trying to take out resistance on the weekly time frame, and you want an upside price target out there. So what I'd be looking at is probably the uh, an A to B equals CD pattern. Let's see. So the swing point at 6.8 million shares that was first taken out with. 3 million shares, so that hasn't taken out, got back below it. So if volume this week, and you're 2.4 so far, if you get more than 6.9 million shares, you'll have a gigantic A to B equal CD to the upside out there. That's the pattern. It's not much of a price target other than just being able to share with you wave number seven on the daily, and you're trading into resistance on the top of the monthly chart. Uh, there was a request to take a look at uh, TGB. What's our read here? A nice move today with price taking on resistance. That's its bearish structured profile. What you'd like to see here is a close above its TD9 count high. And that was from the trading day of December 27th. And that high out there, a buck 50. You close a buck, a, a close a buck above 50, buck 58 is next on its level or it's, its target that is the top of the monthly profile you close above 158 you're back the most recent highs and about the buck 90 level thanks so much for being here folks stay tuned for all the great programming i'll be back with you on terrific thursday please have a wonderful wednesday be safe out there